how does one make conversations with your partner about finances mm -hmm. less loaded and not as intense? Mm -hmm. Because we all know speaking about finances can help you get through all sorts of situations. Yeah, and it, I think it's interesting because I think finances can be just, it can create feelings of shame of I don't have enough money or I, you know, I, I, and then in other people, it can create feelings of fear. I think some people spoke about money as uh, survival tokens. And if you don't feel like you are financially secure, it can actually be a really fearful space to be in. So that's why conversations around money can feel really loaded. And I think it's very interesting in our society. We'll ask, well, it's probably like the second question we ask someone at a Christmas party is, are you, so are you seeing anybody? You know, we go right in there, don't we? But can you imagine just going, so how much did you earn <laughs> last year? We just, we wouldn't do it which is very funny that we have this kind of intrusive approach and this we need to fix you approach to someone who's single. But finances feel really difficult to talk about. Of course, like transparency is great when you feel safe to do so. Again, it's probably not what you'd be talking about on a first date. But I think if you're entering into a longer term relationship, transparency, openness about not just finances, but it could be debt, it could be Financial preferences, different people are, some people are more conservative, some people are, uh, have a high appetite for risk, some people have very different spending patterns that can cause problems in relationships, so getting on the same page. Also recognising if you have similar goals, uh, and then probably getting very pragmatic. I mean, my husband and I, we have a lot of spreadsheets, you know, that we share together. I love spreadsheets. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in charge of the spreadsheets in our house. I was like, you can do them. I'll just look at them when you're finished making them. Yeah. That's that's so interesting. Is there a, a point at which you say this is the right time to start having those conversations in a relationship? Well, I think it's like anything. You need degrees of trust, right? And trust is a, is a compound thing before you start to share what can feel like quite intimate details of your life. Um, you can start also by expressing your own preferences. So I always think that's an easier way to manage these conversations. If you say... So, got any debts? Or, um, <laughs> you know, how much do you really feel comfortable spending? You know, what's your savings like? It's going to feel really, like, in intrusive. If you say, you know what, what's really important to me or something that I've realized or this is how I like to manage things and you share, it creates a much safer environment for the other person to share information in return. So I think that's a nice way you can kickstart the conversation about money and then if you are in a couple and you think this is for the long term, it actually makes so much sense to crack a spreadsheet out. That's why we see the um, rise of dink couples, you know, dual, dual income, no kids. It's a trend. And it's because people are recognizing actually it is a pretty tough economic environment out there. Working together, you can actually, you can save a lot of money and it can become easier to reach financial goals. Yeah, no, that's, that's I never heard of that dink. Yeah, I'm not a dink anymore, unfortunately. I'm a dink. I, I am a dink. Wow. Sounds like I'm insulting myself a bit. <laughs> <laughs> Don't want to misconstrue that word, right? D-I-N-K to anyone. Because listen. N is the important bit. Absolutely.